most active team in this year's NBA offseason as they would make a blockbuster trade for Anthony Davis and sign 10 new player contracts afterwards. Although they missed out on Kawhi Leonard, the Lakers made the most of what was left on the market. In this video, I'm going to rank these signings based on literally getting the best bang for your buck. Factors to be considered are the anticipated contributions this player will make, along with how much money the Lakers pay during free agency. So think of these rankings as production per dollar. At the bottom, I have Jared Dudley as the 10th best signing this offseason. He is more than likely going to be a bench warmer as opposed to a regular rotational player, and even at the veteran's minimum, you aren't going to get much value out of him. If anything, he would bring more value as a locker room presence. If Kuzma starts, then I could see Dudley averaging 10 minutes per night as a backup power forward. But aside from that, his production per dollar value makes him the lowest signing. At number 9, I have Troy Daniels. With how the Lakers finally realized that LeBron needs shooters around him, Daniels was not a bad signing at the veterans minimum. But if you consider the 3 and D players who the Lakers also signed, or the other veterans who bring more than one skill to the table, Troy Daniels at the veterans minimum has the second least to offer and only addresses shooting. A solid signing nonetheless, but other players just have more to bring to the table. At number 8 we have Contavious Cabo Pope. Laker fans have had a long toxic relationship with KCP, and yet they signed him for another 2 years. At $8 million, that is considered a cheap deal relative to his first two seasons. KCP is an erratic shooter but consistent defender. He will definitely be getting some serious playing time again but this time it will be off the bench behind Danny Green. Although KCP might be better than some players listed ahead of him, his $8 million contract doesn't make him much of a bargain. But at number 7 we have the first bargain in Quinn Cook. He was one of the best point guards to come off the bench last postseason as a potent scorer and a floor general as well. His anticipated role is still up in the air, but the skills that he had displayed in this past season combined with the fact that he signed at the lowest pay possible, makes him one of the better bargain signings for the Los Angeles Lakers. At number 6 we have another re-signing in Alex Caruso. The man brings so much to the table with his versatility and once again the Lakers were able to sign him for the veterans minimum. Caruso can playmake, score off the dribble, attack the basket, play off ball and even defend multiple positions as well. There are a bunch of roles that Caruso could play to make this roster all gel, and for that reason, I have him at number 6. At number 5, I have Rajon Rondo. A player who played a crucial role in recruiting DeMarcus Cousins to the Los Angeles Lakers. The comfort in knowing that Rondo can be a ringleader to a front court of DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis makes Rondo highly valuable in making this all work out. It doesn't matter if Rondo is starting or coming off the bench, the talent that is on this roster primes him to be highly productive on the floor as he picks apart the mismatches. He was signed last season for a whopping $9 million and opted to return on the veterans minimum this season. I'm expecting big things from Rondo even at such a cheap deal. Another returning player who cracked the top 5 is JaVale McGee at number 4. McGee had one of the best seasons of his career with the Lakers and garnered a lot of attention entering free agency. For him to return to the Los Angeles Lakers on a 2 year $8 million deal is already great enough, but when you consider the fact that he'll likely be starting at center for the time being alongside Anthony Davis, the Lakers got a major steal in this one. Not just for this year, but for the next as well, in the event Cousins actually successfully lands a large deal. McGee and Davis will be a nightmare backcourt for any opposing team, and each could easily combine for 5 blocks per night. At number 3, I have the Lakers most expensive signing in Danny Green. Did the Lakers overpay for Danny Green? Of course. At $15 million, that is close to the territory of signing a potential all-star. But the fact that Green is the prototypical player to play alongside LeBron James, and the fact that he came off a career-high shooting year, I anticipate Green to have a highly efficient year for the Lakers and to be the primary defender guarding the best wing on the opposing team. At $15 million, he isn't going to give you the production you would see on the stat sheet, but he would make LeBron and Anthony Davis' life so much easier with the intangible things he has to offer. At number 2 I have DeMarcus Cousins who might catch some people off guard. We all know of his backstory as a former superstar and how he signed for only the veterans minimum this offseason. But we also have to acknowledge the uncertainty that comes with Cousins as well. This makes two major injuries he had to deal with in this past season, and even when healthy, Cousins brings defensive concerns. Obviously I'm rooting for him to make a full recovery and eventually be the Lakers starting center moving forward, but we can't lie to ourselves and say that Cousins is not a bit of a forced fit. Best case scenario, Cousins is just so overwhelming on the offensive end that it softens his inefficiencies on defense. If that is the case, having one of the best scoring centers for the veterans minimum should be number one on this list. But once again, it's the uncertainty that Cousins will be able to play 82 games injury free that has him at number 2. So that means finally at number 1 we have Avery Bradley who was the Lakers most recent signing at 2 years $10 million. In my opinion, Bradley was the most underrated signing for the Los Angeles Lakers this offseason. He is equally as good as a complimentary player to LeBron James as Danny Green is. 
He is a 3 and D combo guard who could generate his own offense, playmake if needed, and is only 28 years old. We just saw his former teammate Patrick Beverly sign for a 3 year $40 million contract. And the case could be made that Avery Bradley is even better. At 28 years old, Bradley still has so much left in the tank and should be heavily considered to start. I really like Bradley's ceiling with this roster as a 15 point per night scorer pairing up with Danny Green as a great defensive backcourt. At the price he signed, the Lakers got the most bang for their buck without any questions attached. But that's it for the video, let me know in the comments whether or not you agree with this list. If not, let me know how you would rank these. And who is the most underrated Lakers signing in the 2019 NBA free agency? That's it for the video, take it easy guys.